Astalon Tears of the Earth is yet another Metroidvania platformer in a time where Metroidvania is still one of the highest saturated genres out there. It's pretty hard to have a game stand out in this particular area, but I think Astalon does a lot of interesting and fun things that help it do so. I also think there's a large amount of frustrating things in it, and those almost got me to stop playing it. The three biggest influences for Astalon seem to be Symphony of the Night, Mega Man, and Castlevania 3. Things like the multi-tiered castle layout and the variety of health and damage upgrades harken back to Symphony and all of the handheld Castlevania games that came after it. However, Astalon lacks a lot of the RPG elements that the Konami-inspired half of the Metroidvania genre typically brings. There's nothing like an experience or level-up system in Astalon. Instead, the game lets the player purchase incremental upgrades for each character between deaths. These serve the same purpose as a level up, though, as most of the upgrades the game provides are for things like attack and defense values. Each character also has their own set of unique skills and bonuses that can be unlocked in much of the same way. There's a lot of interesting abilities and mechanics locked in the shop, too. Sometimes these are helpful things, like providing a small heal to the player when they reach the room they last died in, and sometimes it's stuff that should have just been available from the start, like item descriptions. The very basics of game knowledge are something the player has to take a leap of faith on and buy. Also, things in the shop never have a description for what they do, even after purchasing the description upgrade. I wouldn't harp so much on this system if the grind for currency wasn't agonizingly slow. In the 15 or so hours of my initial playthrough, I couldn't even secure enough orbs to pay for half of the character's upgrades, so dumping points into powers that could end up being completely useless put me off on experimenting with them. Some skills just straight up didn't work. It was mostly things that were supposed to provide map beacons or markings for special rooms. The developers have thankfully patched out most of these problems now, but it certainly made playing the game at launch a lot more frustrating. However, I would still prefer if the game listed what each upgrade did before having to purchase it. There's very limited healing in the castle too, so the only options to get further in the game often involve going after orbs to purchase more HP and defense upgrades. You can also just get good at the game, I guess. When I went back and re-recorded footage, I didn't have nearly as much trouble on the fresh file as I initially did. So in a way, Astalon perfectly emulates the frustrating levels of difficulty of the older games that it pulls ideas from. I guess this can kind of be either a positive or a negative depending on what style of games you like. That said, the platforming is one of my favorite parts in Astalon. It feels much closer to a classic Mega Man title rather than the Castlevania games that the visuals invoke. A lot of movement in the game is very loose. The player doesn't have to commit to jumps and can control their jump trajectory pretty well. Dying in Astalon sends you all the way back to the beginning of the castle, with there being very few ways to quick travel around. The majority of any new area is spent painstakingly memorizing patterns for the environment and enemies as you die over and over again. The game could have benefited from a better healing system. Bonfires are placed around the map and can heal the player every now and then, but it typically requires defeating a boss to trigger one of the several limited healing cutscenes. I'd much rather have had the option to partially heal at each bonfire once per run, and reset the heals upon death. I don't think the game would lose any challenge this way, it would just remove a lot of the pointless fluff of having to go over areas again and again. I said my first playthrough of Astalon was about 15 hours, and a large chunk of that was just retreading old ground. I do think the visuals helped me get through a lot of my frustrations in the harder areas. Astalon tries to emulate an 8-bit aesthetic, but it does so in a not-so-truthful way. Astalon looks the way your mind wants to think Castlevania looked almost 30 years ago, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. The characters have these really simple and bright 8-bit-esque palettes that help them stand out from the darker backgrounds. Enemies are also kind of the same, with the less threatening ones having simple designs and colors, but the details ramping up as the danger gets more and more severe. Meanwhile, the backgrounds have these really dark but awesome looking statues in relief that make the castle really foreboding. It was always fun stumbling across some new monstrosity in the background, and I think the majority of the pixel art is very well done. There is definitely a sense of going up against something way more powerful than you are when you compare the cute little 8-bit heroes to the grotesque and monstrously huge things around them. Likewise, the music and sound design is really nice as well, and seems to fluctuate between a bunch of different styles without settling on one in particular. Also, the sound effects in the game are very, very satisfying. The hit effects from defeating enemies are great. If best sound for defeating a level 1 beetle was a game award category, 
Aslan would be my definite vote for 2021. The player starts off with three characters, and two others are hidden within optional parts of the castle. Each of the base three has their own unique quirk in either how they move or what types of situations they can handle. The knight can cut down vines, the archer girl can wall hop, and the mage can shoot projectiles through solid objects. Each character also has two or three upgrade items that enhance their attacks or movement options in some way. A problem I tend to have with these kinds of games is I end up latching onto one particular character unless the game forces me to change them. And while Astalon certainly does force the player to swap between characters, I never felt like one was inherently weaker than the rest. The exception for this is the two characters found in the castle. Both of them are optional, so there are no challenges built into the game for them. Their use is mostly in making shortcuts. By the time I had found them, I had also found most of the movement upgrades, so the shortcuts they provided weren't nearly as useful. There is one other nagging issue I have with the characters. You can't change them on the fly. At least not initially. There's an item that helps rectify this problem, but it's stuck in a completely optional area, and the player won't potentially find it until about halfway through the game. It takes way too long for the game to start opening up and giving the player access to things that should have just been available to them by default. It's a shame, because I think the core of the game, and the majority of the experience, is really, really engaging. I wouldn't have stuck with Astalon all the way to the end if I didn't get some sense of enjoyment out of it, but it took too long for the elements that made it enjoyable to actually appear.